Morning with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, morning muluanji, namaste, jumbo, bienvenidos, hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful city of Irvine, in the great state of California. We are so delighted that you are joining us in our cross-continent adventure. And we're so honored that you are joining us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is returning to the show. It's R.U. Gins. He's here to celebrate one, two, three, scream. Hey, Russell, how are you, buddy? I'm great, and I'm, I'm glad to be back talking about something new yeah. and hilarious. Yeah, I'm really happy you're here. It, it is, it's a hilarious, it's a scary, and it's a really fun book. Am I right? It's a hilarious, terrifying, and hilarifying, just to be quick. Hilarifying. I've never heard that adjective before. That is, um, I, I like that. It's accurate. It's ridiculous <laughs> and hopefully will scare you. Yeah. It's the sense. Well, you know, I, I should mention right at the top that um, Russell is uh, has a giant eyeball looking over his shoulder, keeping us, uh, hopefully keeping us safe. Or keeping us in line. Keeping us in line, yes, yes, indeed. I'm afraid to do anything. I'll be sitting here for weeks. I'm not going to leave this chair. So tell us all about 123 Scream. Well, 123 Scream is a collection of ridiculous horror stories. Um, I uh, My inspiration was there's a lot of uh, books out there that are sort of silly stories you know, scary stories for little kids, you know, and it's all, you know, my, the lunch lady is an alien. My gym teacher is a werewolf haunted, the haunted locker room. And those, in my opinion, they're not really scary. They're like kid stories starring monsters, you know? So, you know, that's one thing. And then at the other end, there's some great scary stories. Don't tell Helen or, or something like that, or, or just stuff that, it won't just scare you, it'll scar you for life. And that's great, that's great, but I'm sort of shooting down the middle. I think there's a dearth, uh, which is almost a good word, mm -hmm. scary word, mm -hmm. but there's a dearth uh, of stories that are both actually funny and actually scary. So um, as I was working on, so uh, my initial pitch to uh, Delacorte, mm -hmm. uh, Penguin Random House Delacorte, uh, was this is Captain Underpants meets Goosebumps. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, that was, uh, I, I think, or, or Black Mirror meets meets Captain Underpants. And because uh, uh, I, I, uh, I look at, you know, Goosebumps, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves Goosebumps. But they're a little bit old timey. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, you know, how many kids really encounter ventriloquist dummies in their daily life? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm my, my kids are a little older, but when my kids were 10, I would not let them run around by themselves at night with a carnival barker. It's just I would be suspicious of the situation. And so um, uh, I, uh, I think so maybe... Maybe my one of my big inspirations was the show. Do you know Black Mirror? You figured, uh, where, or certainly the Twilight Zone. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, taking actual things that are really in a kid's world and making them go horribly, horribly wrong, and uh, and that that was the inspiration. So I, I again, I think my my log line is is still. Um, uh, uh, Black Mirror meets Captain Underpants. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And kids really love scary stories. Yes. Yeah. Yes, kids love to be actually scared. And and uh, I worked with a fantastic illustrator, uh, Javier Espila, uh, and I was constant. I'm, I'm sure I, I was so annoying. You know, normally uh, <laughs> writers aren't authors aren't really supposed to interact with the illustrator, there's sort of a wall. 
And uh, because if you were a publisher and you had hundreds of titles in a in a quarter, if you had to police, you know, 10 percent of interactions between problematic uh, and, and, you know, illustrators, they're the only people more difficult than writers. And uh, so I think they, there's a, a professional separation and that's the job of the editor. Uh, so uh, I wasn't supposed to really interact with it at all, but couldn't help myself. The guy's great. I got all excited. He's drawing pictures about my story. So I sort of tunneled around online and, and reached out to him. And mostly I just kept saying, no, no, scarier. You got to make it, you got to make it horrible. I want a kid to turn the page and go, <gasps> and that didn't really happen. These books aren't that scary. They're more in the mind. They're scary the way that the, the classic Twilight Zone mm -hmm. episodes were. But that said, I was emailing this guy, you know, clips from uh, Trilogy of Terror starring Karen Black. And uh, uh, do you remember the old movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yes. Where Donald, Donald Sutherland points and screams. Mm -hmm. I kept sending him that over and over just to, just to, to goad him into getting a little harder on the, on the, on the kids. Well, you know, you were mentioning, you know, uh, kind of making reality scary. And those old Twilight Zone um, stories – and there's another show that I absolutely adored by Rod Serling, The Night Gallery. Those oh, were, oh really this is actually fun. even more, it's a little less obscure. This is a little closer to Night Gallery because some of those episodes were absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yes. But Night Gallery uh, and uh, Twilight Zone, I mean, they're, they really are probably that. And Dr. Seuss, Shel Silverstein are probably my biggest influences as an author. Uh, Louis, Louis Sacker's in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but definitely the night gallery. Absolutely. It was, um, it was a great series. Yeah. You, you can't see my, uh, my, my office, the walls of my office, but I have all sorts of posters, uh, up that are very inspired by, among other things, night gallery. Yeah. Just to uh, get me in the mood. You know, the, the, the current reoccurring nightmare that I have is that I arrive at a school to do my educational magic shows, and I don't have anything with me. I don't have any props. <laughs> it's like, you got to go on, and an I'm like, okay. Archetypal, you know, I, I think, you know, Neolithic humans, you know, before we even had, you know, agriculture, were sitting there, and right before they woke up, you know, in the morning – you know, somebody woke up and Sog had a terrible dream. He he ran out to hunt the saber toothed tiger, but he forgot his spear. <laughs> I think it's just built into it's built into the genome. <laughs> it, it it must be. It must be. Yeah. I'm it, in my fifties, and I still still have the dream where I never graduated from school because I didn't take that ma finish that math class. <laughs> I, it's just burned in there. <laughs> hey, what is it about spooky, scary? fun stories that, that you love so much? Oh, well, because they, A, they get your attention. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, it's, you know, the good ones, they're all little morality plays, you know? It, you know again, you've mentioned that the classic Twilight Zones, but it's in there in the, in the, in Goosebumps and Fear Street and, and, uh, a little bit in Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, although those, those are sort of folk tales, but, but, they, I, I love that, that they're a fun way to be really dangerous in, in the same way that little kids love dinosaurs. Mm. Little kids love it, and big kids too, love dinosaurs because they were these big, giant, ferocious things that were dangerous, horrifying, and they were 100% real, but they can't get you now. Yeah. And that's why it's so, it's like the safest. It's like the safest, most horrifying thing. And, and I think that, uh, people like horror stories because they're like roller coasters mm -hmm. of the mind. And also, we spend a lot of time thinking, what's the worst thing that could happen? And so it takes a professional author, don't try this yourself, to really come up with what's the very worst thing that could happen. Yeah. Well, I think one of the worst things that can happen is folks don't go out and get their own copy of One Two Three Scream. That would not be hilarifying. It would be just, it would be horrible. It would be scary. But uh, and then they wouldn't be aware 
of 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 these dangers that 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 lurk in this world and uh and uh i don't know if you uh looked at the liner notes of the book at all because i'm really doing this as a community service writing this uh writing this book because everything in it is true Ooh. Ooh. There, there there's um, more or less <laughs> That's like Dan Brown when I first read um, um, his thing, and I'm blanking on the name of the book. Like, everything in this book is true. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Uh, I no, I think I, I, the dedication to my book is dedicated to anyone reckless enough to read it. <laughs> I, well, you know, all that stuff kind of adds to the fun, I think. I remember there, there was like, Mad Magazine used to do great stuff like that. If you are brave enough to read this kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. In fact, Mad Magazine is a really good example. It's not horror, but like their whole conceit is, you know, boy, are you dumb for buying this thing? You know, well, we fooled you. And uh, I, di I didn't really think about it. But yeah, absolutely. Mad Magazine, uh, you know, you know, it always had the price on the front of the magazine crossed out and it would say cheap. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, you know, their, I think their credits was always from the usual gang of idiots. Yeah. And, uh, that was always on their masthead. Uh, but, uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you my, I'm, if, if you'll indulge me. Sure. Uh, the back that says, stop, unless you want to be scared, do not read this book. Within these pages, you'll find oozing horrors and a popular new app that tells kids how they're going to die. You'll learn, you'll learn what happens if you speak the name of, wait, we've said too much already. The things between these covers are too dangerous to ever be let out. That's why we're warning you, stay away from this book or else. Of course, if you're reckless enough to open it, well, no one can say we didn't try. And, you know, talk about uh, a great marketing ploy. Oh, yeah, that, 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 I, I wanted uh, Random House to have people come and like follow uh, follow people around the bookstores, and if they put it in their shopping cart, to take it out, <laughs> take it. Out. <laughs> they didn't go for that one bit. They didn't go for that at all. No, I'm sure they didn't. Hey, one of the things you offered to do for us was to read a little bit from the book, and I think people would love to to hear one of the stories. Oh, I, I'd be happy to. Um, of course. Um, if I'd love to uh, start by playing you the theme song. Please Sorry, do. Yeah. Isabel Jones. They found all her skin, but none of her bones. Wait, what? Asked Monica Green's friend Isabel. She was staring at her phone with a perplexed look on her face. She showed her phone to Monica as they stood in line for the school bus. It was, an, it was open to an app called Instagrave. The picture of Isabel's future tombstone filled the screen. Pretty strange, don't you think? She asked. How could it, I be found without my bones? Where did they go? What's going to kill me? Monica looked at the phone, then at her confused friend. As soon as Insta first popped up mysteriously on someone's phone, it spread like wildfire. The whole school was obsessed with learning how they were going to die. But the answers didn't always make sense. Monica tried to come up with a few things that might result in the kind of death Instagram described to Isabel. A giant mosquito? Monica asked. It could suck out your insides. It would have to be pretty big, said Isabel. Otherwise, I don't think it would have enough suction. Wait, that doesn't answer the bone question. What happened to my bones? How about an accident with a fantasy kitchen gadget, Monica suggested. Maybe, Isabel said, nodding. But I don't do a lot of cooking. Kitchen gadgets really aren't my thing. 
Monica did not want to spend any more time thinking about her friend's death. Her whole class would be on the bus soon, and she wanted to learn about her own death before they got to Red Ledge Canyon. She reached into her pocket for her phone. Hey, everyone, Solomon Roy shouted from three places ahead in the line. I'm going to smash into the ground. See? He held his phone over his head. Monica squinted at it along with everyone else. She saw an obelisk beside a crater. Words were carved into the narrow stone monument. This is the crash site of Solomon Roy. His emergency parachute failed to deploy. While a dozen kids gathered to peek at Solomon's memorial, Monica stood back. She unlocked her phone and launched Instagram. Get back in line, everyone, Miss Walker ordered. I need a head count of all my fourth graders before we get on the bus. As the teacher walked past, counting heads, Monica stared at her phone. A creepy skull filled the screen. Red lights flashed in the eye sockets and the app crashed. The screen flickered bright blue for a moment, then faded to black. After a moment, the home screen reappeared. Monica groaned softly. Her phone had been giving her trouble all week. Someone tapped her on the shoulder. She turned to see Kayla Brown behind her with a big smile on her face. She held out her phone for Monica to see. On the screen, a selfie of Kayla with the same happy expression. Get ready, said Kayla. My face is about to rot. One, two, three, four. As her friend counted, the smiling face began to shrivel. Monica watched as the skin puckered. It curdled like a bowl of butterscotch pudding left out in the sun for days, except that it really happened quickly. Over the course of a few seconds, Kayla's face crumbled away, leaving nothing but a shiny white skull. Twelve, thirteen, go, said Kayla. She pressed the lightning bolt button beneath the skull. Drops of blood trickled from the top of the screen, and a hammer and chisel appeared. The tools blinked and rocked. Instagrave was calculated. A gray marble tombstone appeared. It had scuba goggles and a snorkel carved into the stone above chiseled words. Kayla wrinkled her nose as she read them out loud. This grave is a memory of Kayla J. Brown. She thought she was rising while she swam straight down. Hey, Kayla, someone called from behind them in line. Isn't your family planning to visit relatives in Trinidad this July? Monica watched her friend think about it for a moment. Then Kayla's eyes widened. It's true, said Kayla, and they live in a house close to the beach. I'm going to bring goggles and a snorkel and go swimming every day while I'm there. Monica quickly did the math. You only have four months to live, she told Kayla. Instagram was amazing and kind of mysterious, too. Even though Monica really didn't believe the drowning part, she wasn't sure how the app could know when someone was planning to visit a Caribbean island and go snorkeling. I only have four months to live, Kayla repeated cheerfully to avoid standing behind her in line. Enough with the graves, barked Miss Walker. I need 28 butts in 28 seats so we can visit the state park. Let's go. The line began to move. As she followed her classmates onto the bus, Monica launched the app again. The skull with the red eyes appeared and disappeared. She heard slippery sloshing sounds as pale worms crawled into view. They wriggled about and arranged themselves into twitching gray letters. Take photo now. Monica reached the bus door. She grasped the railing with one hand and raised her phone with the other. She smiled for the camera and her battery died. <laughs> Keep moving, Miss Walker shouted. Monica sighed. She dropped her hands to her thighs, still clutching the phone, then trudged up the steps and headed down the aisle. Everyone else on the bus was using Instagrave and sharing their dooms. Why wouldn't it work for her? Several of Monica's classmates held up their phones so she could read the graves and markers as she passed. Here lies the body of Omar Kareem, trampled when somebody yelled, free ice cream. Let's all drink a toast to Eleanor Blenheim. She sweetened her tea with pure rattlesnake venom. Here rest the remains of Yolanda Dundee. The seed that she swallowed grew into a tree. She got lost in the woods, Jennifer Cook. Nobody liked her, so nobody looked. A drone carried Kamala Jane out to sea. She didn't come back, but delivery was free. Monica felt severely left out. Her classmates were going to be poisoned, flattened, torn to pieces from the inside out by tree branches. What was going to be her fate? 
The only dead thing Monica could tell her friends about was her phone battery. Monica saw an empty seat of a head next to Ben Sharp. She felt her luck changing. Everyone called Ben Mr. Network. He was obsessed with computer games and coding and technology in general. He wore a t-shirt with rows of ones and zeros on it. If anyone could help her, it was Ben. Hi, Ben, Monica said as she sat down. Do you have an extra charger I can use? No problem, he replied. I've got three batteries with me right now, fully charged. He unzipped his backpack, reached in, and pulled out a battery the size of a sandwich. This baby's got 18,000 milliamps, he told Monica. But you've got to check this out first. Look. With his other hand, Ben held up a tablet. The screen, of course, was displaying Instagrave. For 17 days, Ben Sharp sat on a scanner. The rays finally killed him, but his butt was sure tanner. Thank you so much, said Monica, as she took the battery from him. I hope you have fun until you're well done. Clever, said Ben. She found a small cord dangling from the battery and plugged it into her phone. By the time they had reached the parking lot at Red Ledge, Red Ledge State Canyon Park, excuse me, Red Ledge Canyon State Park, her phone was fully charged. Welcome to nature, said Miss Walker as they filed past her and exited the bus. This may come as a shock to some of you, but there are amazing things to see that aren't on screens. So it's time to stow your phones until we get back on the bus. None of the kids were excited to hear this news. Some of them groaned. I need my phones to take nature photos, someone wailed. How will I know when it's time to go home? Another kid asked. I said stow your phones, Ms. Walker shouted. When their teacher used that tone, the kids knew they had to actually listen. Soon, all 28 fourth graders had tucked their phones into their pockets, purses, or backpacks. Stick to the trails, everyone, Miss Walker called. Follow me and watch your step. As her classmates headed out of the clearing and into the woods, Monica walked slowly, letting them get ahead of her. She didn't want to wait any longer. Miss Walker just didn't understand, and this was her big chance. As soon as she made sure that the others were out of sight, Monica took out her phone. Come on, come on, she whispered impatiently while Instagrave loaded. The skull appeared and disappeared. The worm spelled out, take photo now. Monica raised the phone, tilted her head slightly, and smiled. Click. Not bad, she said, studying her selfie. She had snapped a good one on the first try. Her hair glistened in the late morning sun. The rocky ravines of Red Ledge Canyon surrounded the clearing behind her. They formed an excellent backdrop. At last, she was going to find out her fate. As she counted to 13, Monica stared at her selfie. In the photo, her eyes began to sink slowly into their sockets, sagging like melted marshmallows. Her skin became reddish green, then yellowish pink, then bright white. Her hair fell out and her teeth twitched. Pop, pip, pop. One by one, the teeth burst into a tiny cloud of chalky dust. It was working. As soon as the photo of her face had become a toothless skull, Monica pressed the lighting bolt. Blood trickled, the hammer and chisel blinked, and a tombstone appeared. Monica squinted at the words. It was hard to see the screen clearly in the direct sunlight. She held her phone at an angle and took a step backward. Then another. Then another. Monica! Isabel called out. Where are you? A hundred yards down the trail, Ms. Walker had stopped everyone for another head count. One of her students was missing. The class had backtracked quickly and fanned out around fields, trails, and the parking lot, looking for their absent friend. Over here, Ben called, towards the edge of the clearing. I see a phone on the ground. He raced over to the object, picked it up, and examined it. I knew it, he said. This is Monica's. I let her use my charger on the bus. 18,000 milliamps. He brushed the phone against his pant leg to wipe away the canyon's red dust. Then he stared at the still blowing letters, the still blowing screen. Letters had been cut into a marble slab. 200 feet down, you'll find Monica Green. She walked off a cliff while she looked at her screen. <laughs> I love bravo 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 that was that was wonderful well thank you i stumbled a little i'm not a an audio professional they actually have a 
an audiobook version of this. Awesome. And uh, there's a woman, her name is Kathleen McInerney, and she's awesome. She's awesome. That would be great. Well, that's a fun, fun book and a nice little twist at the end there. I did not see that coming. You did mine. Yeah. She should have looked <laughs> and she was staring at her screen. Oh, my goodness. If you are, I live in D.C., there's the Beltway. Mm -hmm. If you glance to your left and glance to your right while you're driving, um, there's always at least one of one of those two people uh, are using their phones instead of watching the roads. We're all doomed. Yeah, we're all doomed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, um, I'm happy that I, I, I got out of that, got out of that habit. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what, I, what you should be doing while you're driving is reading this book, but <laughs> One Two Three Scream by R. U. Gids. Or listening to the audiobook. That that could be good too. Of course. Yeah. Or this podcast. There you go. There you go. Well, hey, listen, why don't you tell everybody where they can go to find out more about one, two, three scream and find out everything that's coming from that very inventive mind of yours. Well, thank you. Uh one, two, three scream uh is available well, wherever hilarifying books are sold. And uh and uh, also, I have a website, 123scream.com. Again, that's 123scream.com. And uh, if you go there before midnight tonight, no. uh, if uh, there I have uh, all sorts of extras, printable puzzles, because I'm, I'm big into the, the puzzles and interactive. That's my vocation when I am not, uh, when I am not uh, uh, writing, writing books for kids. I'm a, I design puzzles and board games and... Uh, and uh, and theme songs. And so, of course, there's all that stuff at 123screen.com. Uh, and, uh, uh, and plus, I'm uh, getting ready to launch all sorts of funny little videos, you know, sort of basically scary parodies of TikToks and oh. Instagrams and, and stuff like that. That sounds, um, that sounds all awesome. All in good fun. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we've had a really hilarifying time. Speaking to the author of One, Two, Three, Scream, R. U. Gins. Hey, M Russell, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. I know I gave you a big uh, dose of reading. Uh, I hope that's okay, but it's so much. You know, you can tell I'm I'm really excited to to, to share the books. Uh, the the last thing I was going to mention, answering your earlier question, I didn't realize it when the story when I started writing these stories like the classic night galleries mm -hmm. and twilight zones they're all little uh morality plays mm -hmm. you know um most of uh you know when i think uh i had to explain to the publisher you know bad things happen to bad people and also some kids who don't deserve it yeah well, well that's life yeah that's what happens in so life. thank you thank you for having me this is really great yeah we've had a great time thanks so much Thank you. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guests would be Brian Ray and Chris Bear. They'll be here to help us acknowledge OCD Week. OCD Week is coming uh, October 9th to the 15th. And we are giving you a little advanced preview so you can be ready uh, to become more aware of a, a, an issue that is very serious and affects lots and lots of families. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we're going to start by thanking our guest, R.U. Gins. Please be sure to check out the hilarifying graphic novel, One, Two, Three, Scream. I also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Mirabella Q. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.